DOR, so what's going on? Mike Boers with the Mike Boers channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking furnaces today. In the event that your furnace turns on, you can hear it running, but there's no heat and it's not heating your house. We're going to go to the furnace and talk about a few things that might cause that. Let's get started. All right, DIYers, the very first thing we are going to do is direct our attention to the wall mounted thermostat, and they are very basic and standard system wide. As you can see, Ours says heat on, and currently what that means is the furnace is running, and we've got it set to 70. Right now it's below 70, so it's 69 degrees, thus triggering the furnace to turn on and bring it back up to 70 degrees. As you see down here, the little notch or lever is in the heat position, and here is where we are going to dive into it. In the event that you walk up to this wall mounted thermostat or yours in your house, obviously, and just switch it to the off position while it has the heat on on the screen, Guess what? That is an interrupted cycle and your furnace obviously is going to turn off. However, any remaining heat inside the furnace and ductwork are going to remain inside. So when it comes time to turn this back to the heat position and turn your furnace back on, it is going to go through on average a 90 second test cycle to ensure that the furnace is safe and the ductwork has no built up heat or back pressure so it can turn on. In addition, the second cause in the event that you just didn't randomly switch this to the off position in the event that you have a power outage. And DIYers, power outages are unfortunately more common than you think. A power outage while your furnace is on will cause this as well. Let's go down to the furnace and talk more about this. Inside the furnace now, let me hop to the opposite side. We have a Bryant brand furnace, as you see here. This is a carrier brand. And there's our large exhaust pipe or ductwork feeding outside. Coming to the right side, yours may be on the left hand side, is our cutoff switch or main power switch. And in the event that you are servicing your furnace, obviously you want to make sure that is in the off position as well as the wall mounted thermostat we just showed you. Again, in the off position for safety purposes anytime you work on your furnace. However, unfortunately, in very uncommon circumstances, your switch may be accidentally turned off. And that may be caused by working around the furnace or you could be moving stuff. As you see here, I've got random baseboards and floorboard as well as hardwood and I've got paint in the event that I'm in this area moving stuff around and I accidentally turn that switch off while the furnace is running or obviously in the uncommon and unlikely event that your children or maybe even a pet accidentally turns that switch off with the furnace on guess what it will do the exact same thing that we just talked about upstairs at the wall mounted thermostat it will turn the system down and that will be considered an interrupted cycle when it relates to the control board inside the furnace DIY is next. I set the camera back. I want to talk more about an interrupted cycle and the effect it has on the operation of your furnace. And again, this can happen as you move about around the furnace, whether you're working around it, storing stuff like I showed you, or you're in here doing other things and a child or a pet just happens to be in here with you and accidentally turns that switch off. Or again, a recent power outage that classifies as an interrupted cycle if the furnace was currently running when that switch was turned off. So at this point, let's back up all the way back to when the furnace initially turns on. And when referencing your wall mounted thermostat, again, it will say heat on. And down inside your utility room, your switch will be in the on position as well. And at that point, again, the furnace turns on, but the heat has not ignited and began to flow through the ductwork. And it begins its test cycle. And on average, they usually go about 90 seconds tops. However, in most cases, when the ductwork is clean and clear and there's no issues with the internal portion of of the furnace it will then trigger the gas and the igniter to ignite the burners and produce the heat in addition it's also verifying that you are getting the proper ventilation coming into the system so in other words it's testing your filter that's currently installed and if it's an old filter and very dirty that will decrease the amount of air and efficient flow of air through the filter and into the system and it will not ignite the burners to produce the heat However, if all looks good, your blower fan is running and you're getting kind of room temperature slash slightly cold air coming out of your vents for the first minute, maybe minute and a half of when the furnace turns on, it will then ignite the burners and the burners will produce the heat. And that big blower motor and blower fan down at the very bottom of your furnace will assist in pushing that hot air through the ductwork and out of your vents to heat your home. And on average, it runs for maybe about seven to 10 minutes. And then once that preset temperature on your wall mounted thermostat is met, your furnace then turns off, right? 
However, when the furnace turns off, you may have noticed over the time living in your home that the blower fan and blower motor are still running. However, there was a change in sound when the gas valve turned off and the igniters turned off as well as your internal burners turned off. But again, that lower fan is still spinning. And at that point, just like the very beginning of your furnace turning on and running that test cycle to ensure everything is good prior to igniting the burners, it falls back into that post run test phase. And basically all it's doing at that point is continuing to blow all that warm air out of the entire furnace and the ductwork and out of your vents and into your home. That lower blower motor and fan is doing its best to alleviate any leftover hot or warm air from just hanging out inside your furnace and ductwork and not actually making it inside the rooms of your home to heat your home. So with that basic understanding of the furnace operation, let's go back to the interrupted cycle. So again, the furnace is up and running and accidentally the switch is turned off or the wall mounted thermostat is turned to the off position. All that warm and hot air inside your furnace and your ductwork is trapped because again, your blower motor and fan stop spinning. And in the event that you immediately within maybe a minute after the system shut down, you go ahead and turn the switch on. Guess what? It goes back into that pre-test phase or cycle to ensure everything is safe before turning back on. However, at this point, unfortunately it is not because there is so much warm and hot trapped air inside this initial portion of the furnace and the internal sensors will not allow the furnace to be turned on. So what I recommend doing is in the event that this happens to you, turn everything back on, allow the system to run. Again, the blower motor and blower fan are going to turn on to continue pushing all that hot air out of this initial portion of your furnace and out of your ductwork and vents and into your home. And honestly, DIYers, that could take upwards of five minutes, maybe even longer. So don't stress out. Don't think your furnace is broken. Just allow the system to self-manage and push all that warm and hot air out of the ductwork to return to a safe state or configuration so it can restart and operate normally. Again, that could take upwards of five, maybe 10 minutes even to blow all that hot and warm air out of this portion of your furnace so it can return to normal operation. To the opposite side, I'll turn everything back on and return my furnace to normal operation. Hopefully this helps. Coming over here. We've got our DIY pegboard and scrolling above right now is a link to a video that shows us putting all this together. And none of that is brand new. Those are all leftover items from recent DIY videos. Quite a lot, actually. Again, DIYers, hopefully this helps. Hey, do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.